Good morning, folks. It was two nights ago we released the special video, The Earth Turns Over, Advanced Catastrophism. We'll dive deeper into the core topic of that video today with new science. But there's other news to cover as we begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun were not exactly quiet. Not exactly threatening either, though. Pops at the active region. Southern coronal hole, firmly transequatorial. Those large filaments keep growing, and as they do, become harder for the corona to stabilize. The release of filament CMEs often trigger solar flares at nearby active regions too. We'll have eyes open for that. We can see small solar flare production, nothing major as the dimmed X-ray flux here of 131 angstrom shows the only real brightness is coming from the active regions, but it's minor. Quick look at the solar wind tells a calm and quiet story both in the stream and geomagnetically. Enhanced stream from that coronal hole is about another two to three days away. Folks, this is another topic I'm happy to bring up whenever the science allows. Deeper investigations into the motions of the planets and how migration between orbits and even planet swapping is a real part of planetary system evolution. Those would be the same stories told by the ancients of chaos in the sky, except of course the scientists claim it was millions and millions of years ago in reality, and people couldn't have seen it, they just guessed or accidentally knew that the planets got shaken up. That is seriously mainstream science. Up next, numerous big name authors on this paper solidifying both the atmospheric electricity and thermal anomalies before earthquakes, including OLR. These are two of the three factors we use to predict earthquakes at QuakeWatch.net, and this is probably the 400th such paper we've shared on this topic as veteran observers fall asleep. But wake up, I'm going to science slap. Perhaps we recall a few days ago when a major paper claiming global warming was all our fault needed to be drilled down to the model specifics to realize they are only using solar irradiance. There are hundreds of papers on the particle forcing, and we just saw this past week, how the sun's IMF couples to Earth's field and is transformed into the Earth system energy. Irradiance is one piece, particles and magnetic fields are the others. Now today, we find it takes much less effort to elucidate their ignorance, and as an antidote to the arrogance of claiming the lack of control by the sun, we find that they indeed, in one of the top climate journals on Earth, used nothing but solar irradiance. If you do that, yes, you will trick yourself into thinking the sun does nothing. Two of the three authors there are from Harvard. Up next, in a nod to how difficult it is to actually find the evidence of geomagnetic excursions in the past, the first discovered and most well-documented excursion had never been seen in Australia until now. The rest of the excursions had all been questioned, even years after their initial discovery, and today's first in Australia indicates that the long time it took to confirm and reconfirm the other excursion events every 12,000 years or so was about right. It was two nights ago that we tied that excursion cycle, the great solar flash, the galactic trigger and more into the Earth cyclical deluge and in the spirit of the Earth turning over. Let's go over the mini version of that which happens in modern times. Earth's rotation glitches, slight variations in the length of a day. In addition to a cycle of millisecond variation, it is known that geomagnetic jerks from Earth's core and geomagnetic storms from the Sun can cause anomalous glitches in Earth's rotation. And just before the 17-year anniversary of the great Halloween superstorm from the Sun, it is confirmed that that indeed was the latest major solar-induced glitch in our rotation. And when the scientists are left suggesting that it's a direct transfer of angular momentum from the solar wind to the solid Earth, things get interesting. And when a doctoral thesis as detailed as I've ever seen suggests that these glitches in the length of a day derive from deeper at the core mantle boundary, Let's just say that if your imagination isn't on speed right now, you did not watch our video two nights ago. The great solar storm plus the geomagnetic excursion causes the great glitch in the inner stability, rotation, and the eventual turning over of the Earth. Folks, we've got deadlines and events approaching at Observer Ranch, a campground, education center, permanent home of Observer events, and quite apparently many of the observers too. The first and second visits to the ranch and the lotteries for the units, whether it's a dedicated RV spot, vacation home, or full-time living, I look forward to seeing many of you next month. The deadline for the first lottery and visitation is February 4th. Follow the directions on ObserverRanch.com. The accredited button there, it takes about two to four days to get through that process. We greatly appreciate your support. If you haven't watched that video from two nights ago, it is worth it, even if all you get is an introduction to the Texas rock wall, 70 feet tall, 20 miles around, perfect brick structure and shapes and angles, covered up 
literally and figuratively. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.